A week ago, I got an email from Harry SM7 PNV. Would I like to try a new Whisper transmitter kit? Of course, I couldn't refuse, and here it is. It's one of the first products of Zactech, a startup Harry established after a long career in IT and electronics. So what is the Whisper TX LP1? It's a standalone Whisper transmitter. It can operate from 136 kilohertz to 70 megahertz. As you'll see later on when we open it up, all of it's pre-built except for the low pass filter that you need to assemble to get it onto the band that you want. Other features include a 0.3 of a watt power output, open source software, and possibly most significantly, a GPS. That GPS provides accurate timing and position data. That's unlike other whisper transmitters where you may need to press the button manually to start it up and also change the location manually if you need to. Therefore, you could have this transmitter on something that's moving like a vehicle or boat and the GPS will automatically adjust its location and transmit it as a grid locator. Enough talk, what do you get? First of all, a note from Harry saying that it's pre-programmed with my call sign, transmission on 40 meters, and also a transmit cycle. Two minutes on and pausing for four minutes. You just need to connect things up after building the 40 meter filter. There's mention here that a new type of firmware that will use a PC client software to set configuration like frequency, call sign, etc. is under development and that will be released in a few weeks. Currently though, if you need to change the setting, an upload from the Arduino IDE is required. And more information, you can find Harry's website at zachtech.com. That's Z-A-C-H-T-E-K.com. This is what you get. A GPS antenna, the mezzanine card, the whisper transmitter module, a USB cable, and the parts to build the low pass filter. The real guts of it is this board here, GPS antenna here, and your transmit antenna, this connection, both SMA connections. As is explained, this link is removed when you put in the low pass filter. The underside of the board appears to be high quality. This is the documentation that comes with it. There's more information on the Zactech website. But the main modules are basically the GPS unit, a USB to serial converter, Arduino, a reference clock, a HF generator. That is the well-known SI5351. Only one output is used. And the power amplifier is a 74AC244. It's high speed, so that's why it still operates as high as 70 megahertz. Then there's an output transformer. And then down here is the low pass filter that you build four capacitors and three toroids. The formulas for the low pass filter are also on this sheet. Now time to build the low pass filter. I've already removed the bridging wire. First step is to solder in the capacitors. It's easy enough to find where C1 goes, it's there. C2 and 3, these are the higher value capacitors in the middle of the Pi network, go down here. Although not easily visible, the marking for C4 is under this label. The label also covers one of the holes in the circuit board here. A nice touch is these appear to be high quality 1% capacitors. Although I don't have a problem with them, a lot of people don't seem to like winding toroids. I happen to know these are T50-6 toroids, but the first time builder may not. This could be confusing as the turns chart refers both to T37 and T50 toroids. I think there should be more on the website about building the low pass filter. This is my first completed toroid, L1, although L3 is identical. 18 turns, but the turns counted according to the number that pass through the middle of the core. Once you finish winding the toroid, scrape about 10 millimeters or so off the ends of the enameled copper wire with a hobby knife, and then gently tin them with a soldering iron and solder. 
that ensures good connections when you solder it to the circuit board. L1 and L3 are installed. What about L2? Well, its position looks obvious, but it would be nice to have a label marking it. I suspect it's another thing that's concealed by the TCXO label. The unit requires 5 volts. I'll use this power bank to run it. This is the moment of truth. We have the GPS antenna, the main board, and 5 volts of power. It's a bit hard to see here because of the sunlight. The LED lights up, it is flashing. Because the house may cause some obstructions, I'll move the GPS antenna to nearer the middle of the lawn. Inside, I can hear its signal on the micro bit X. After having the GPS unit outside, I've now brought it in. One feature is an accessory board that gives you access to a lot of connections. For instance, with the antenna connection, you could use an external low pass filter, i.e. one that's not on the main board. Or you could build some sort of power supply. All these can be mounted on this mezzanine board. One thing the instructions don't say is when you're mounting the components in the Pi network that you need to allow clearance for the mezzanine board. It's a very tight fit, especially if I'm going to be having solder pads under the board. Smaller toroids such as T37-6 and smaller capacitors should have been supplied to keep the clearance sufficient. I'm on the border of two grid locator squares. Currently in QF22, QF21 is a short distance over there, just down the coast. I'll spend a few minutes here, then I'll pack up the station and set it up again just over the line. The antenna I'm using is an NFED from Soda Beams. This is the second installation just south of the border in QF21. Looking at the results from RISPRNET, you can see that my position has changed from QF22 to QF21. I've enjoyed using the Zactec GPS Whisper Transmitter. It's a versatile bit of kit, and as you saw from the demonstration, it works very well. My only suggestions are some better documentation, particularly in the construction of the Pi Network output filter. If you want one of these units, head over to the Zactec website, zactec.com.